Hey everybody, James again with TFB TV and happy 4th of July. I hope you're all doing something fun and you're not stuck in front of the computer watching TFB TV. Personally, I'm going to be in Alaska. I'm going to be camping at Katmai National Park, checking out the Grizzlies, doing the salmon run on Brooks Falls. Should be really fun. I'm looking forward to it and I hope you guys are doing something equally as awesome. Speaking of awesome, we got a new mini-series coming to TFB TV, episode one today. It's going to be called The Guns of SOCOM, and we're going to be looking at the guns used by United States Special Operations. I figure there's no better day to kick this off than 4th of July. Now, I have to say, briefly, 40% of our traffic actually comes from outside of the United States. And I want to say thank you guys so much for watching TFB TV, whether or not you're a U.S. citizen or if you're from somewhere else. Thank you a ton for watching our channel. But today is our Independence Day, and it's a really important deal to Americans. So we're going to start this series off appropriately with a look at the Mark 18. This is essentially a short-barreled M4, but it's actually so much more than that. So we're going to discuss that when we talk about why this is one of the most prolific carbines within the special operations community later in this video. So as I said, I really appreciate everybody watching this video, U.S and overseas, but today, on this 4th of July, this is a special episode of TFB TV for my brothers and sisters from the United States of America! America! Happy 4th of July, everybody. So to explain the scope of this video, we're going to talk about the military's Mark 18 carbine program, and we're also going to do a review of the Daniel Defense Mark 18, which they allowed me to use for purposes of this video. And by the way, I borrow heavily from Small Arms Review's article about the Mark 18 written by friend of TFB, Chris Bartacci. It's an excellent article he wrote about 10 years ago. I suggest you check it out. While the Daniel Defense Mark 18 is configured almost identically to the military's Mark 18, it actually has several upgrades that technically exceed the current Mark 18 specs. It is worth noting that Daniel Defense does indeed supply the military with the Mark 18 rail system. That is the Daniel Defense RIS-2 rail system. So when you order the Daniel Defense Mark 18, you are getting the exact same rail system used on the current version of the Spec Ops issued Mark 18. The Mark 18 is part of the Close Quarter Battle Receiver or CQBR program. The military wanted to develop a replacement upper for the M4. The standard M4 uses a 14.5 inch barrel. At the time for small carbines or personal defense weapons, the military and special operations units were using the MP5, which is a 9mm. Many consider the MP5 to be underpowered and not suitable for long distance engagement. And while the 14 and a half inch barrel M4 performed adequately at distance, it was also unwieldy and not suitable for use indoors or in close quarters. Accordingly, the close quarter battle receiver brought the barrel length down to 10.3 inches, which allowed the upper to be 19 and a quarter inches and permitted essentially a micro M4 with an overall length less than 27 inches. Some modifications had to be made to the Mark 18 to get it to work properly, including opening the gas port to 0.07 inches, changing out the gas rings, and replacing the four coil extractor spring with a five coil spring. As mentioned in Bartachi's article, there's no standard Mark 18 configuration per se, although there are more common configurations. Almost all the Mark 18s will have 10.3 inch barrels in the Daniel Defense RAS 2. The Mark 18 will have either a standard M4 stock or the LMT SOP mod stock. Issued Mark 18s will likely have a fixed LMT rear sight or a Knight's Armament flip-up sight as I've equipped this Daniel Defense Mark 18 with. Most Mark 18s will feature reflex optics from either EOTech, like this EOTech XPS, but optics from EOTech's competitors, Trijicon and Aimpoint can be found on the Mark 18s as well. Although the Mark 18 small and uses a 10.3 inch barrel, it can still fire a projectile that exceeds 2,500 feet per second and has an effective range 
of 300 meters or greater. Turning to the Daniel Defense Mark 18 specifically, it has a weight of 5.88 pounds and it has the exact same length as an issued Mark 18, which is 26 and 3 quarters inches. That's because it uses the same mil spec buffer tube and 10.3 inch barrel. However, it bears mentioning that the Daniel Defense Mark 18 barrel is cold hammer forged, unlike the barrels on issued or contract Mark 18s. This means that your Daniel Defense Mark 18 barrel is going to last a lot longer due to the increased durability from the cold hammer forging process. The Mark 18 I'm using in this video has the mil spec plus flat dark earth coating. The Mark 18 also comes with the Daniel defense buttstock and pistol grip which are in my opinion eminently more comfortable than any of the furniture from the issued mark 18s all of daniel defense's components either meet or exceed military specification so for example you have in the rear a staked castle nut this is an intentional deformation of the metal where the castle nut meets the receiver to prevent the castle nut from loosening up during hard use, which is important because that's what keeps your stock in place. It also has a staked gas key. Similarly, this is intentional deformation of the screws, holding the gas key to the bolt carrier group to prevent those screws from loosening and reduce the possibility of a catastrophic failure of the bolt carrier group. I've heard that Daniel Defense also provides its pinned low profile gas block to the military for use in the Mark 18. It's CNC machined to 4140 hardened steel with mil spec phosphate coating. The barrel, the bolt, and the bolt carrier are magnetic particle inspected. It comes with an H buffer or a heavy buffer standard. And of course the Daniel Defense Mark 18 is 100% made in the USA. So I would say one of the things that makes the 223 or 556 AR-15 particularly well suited to operating in a compact setup is the the 223 round the 556 round is extremely low recoiling I'd like everyone to pay attention real quick at how little recoil or how little jump there is with this mark 18. you see that? Almost nothing. I mean, almost no movement. It's like shooting a laser. That's not only by virtue of the fact that the 223556 is a small round. I mean, again, 223, it's barely larger than a 22 in terms of diameter, but you're shooting a 223 that relies on velocity for power, velocity and fragmentation. So not only do you have a round that's inherently light recoiling, but you also have a platform in the AR-15 that is inherently light recoiling. It uses a direct impingement gas system. So without oversimplifying it, you have a gas tube towards the end of the barrel that redirects gas pressure towards the bolt carrier group, which assists in cycling the action. And you don't have any moving components. You basically have a tube that's redirecting gas back towards a very lightweight bolt and bolt carrier group. So you don't really have a lot of mass coming back at you whenever you're firing, unlike the AK-47, which has a massive piston that's linked to the bolt and the bolt carrier group, and that entire thing is slugging back and forth every time you fire it. So not only do you have a light recoiling round, but you have a very light, mild operating system, and that translates into a very easy to shoot gun that's still extremely lethal. So guys, this video about the Mark 18 is a culmination of one of the best collaborations that YouTube has ever seen. And what do I mean by that? I mean that TFB reached out to Daniel Defense, to Surefire, to Silencer Shop, to EOTech, to get all this gear to put together this Mark 18 for this video. Surefire sent in the SOCOM 2 quick detach suppressor, which is a smaller version of the SOCOM that is used by special operations units. Incredible longevity. And then we've got the EOTech holographic sight, one of the toughest sights made out there. It's compact, it mounts low to the gun, it has a battery life of 600 continuous hours on one CR123 lithium battery. It's night vision compatible and is four inches by two inches by two and a half inches, but it's incredibly durable and it's submersible to 33 feet of depth. And one of the easiest to use. You can shoot it both eyes open with no problem. The EOTech reticle is one of the best out there. It's got a large outer reticle, which is perfect for close quarters shooting. So if you need to just identify your target, identify a reticle against it and shoot, you've got that large outer reticle that's easy to find, but you also have a smaller dot in the middle of the reticle that's a lot more precise and allows for more precision at distance.
As you can see, because it's a light recoiling and accurate round, very easy to hit a man-sized target offhand, rapid fire at 100 yards or even more. There are guys out there who are much better shots than I am who could probably do something like that at 250 or 300 yards with the Mark 18. Surefire and Silencer Shop were kind enough to send along the SOCOM 556 RC2, which is a smaller version of the SOCOM suppressor issued with the military's Mark 18. It's specific to the 223 or the 556, and the suppressor attaches to a Surefire muzzle device, which allows it to be quickly removed and reinstalled while maintaining the exact same point of aim, point of impact. Proprietary gas flow management inside the suppressor body virtually eliminates first round flash. It's 6.2 inches long and only 17 ounces in weight, with a diameter of 1.5 inches. The SOCOM series was initially released in 2012 and it was selected by the U.S. Special Operations Command or SOCOM in what Surefire describes as the most extensive and rigorous suppressor evaluation in history. Surefire said that the primary quality that they were looking for in manufacturing, designing the SOCOM suppressor was longevity. That's really what the customer wanted, i.e. the government. They wanted longevity and so they've had Surefire SOCOM silencers that have been returned for T&E or maintenance that have had 100,000 or more rounds through them. And the crazy part about it is another quality that Surefire looks for with the SOCOM can is accuracy, really point of aim, point of impact shift. With the cans that they got back that had 100,000 or more rounds through them, they still only saw a point of aim or point of impact shift of an inch or less at 100 yards. They actually hand test all of these cans before they go out to make sure that there's a point of aim, point of impact shift of no more than an inch before they go to the customer. Again, SOCOM. Surefire also sent along a scout light, which is popular in special operations circles. The M300C seen in this video has an output of 500 lumens, a runtime of one hour, but it's only four inches long and 1.125 inches in diameter. It weighs four ounces with batteries. This model is referred to as an M300 vampire because it uses infrared light as well. So although that will generate no light visible to the human eye, it provides ample illumination with night vision use. They also sent me a pressure switch assembly, which allows the operator to turn the light on by applying pressure to the tape switch. All in all, this is one incredible package, and it's really no wonder that the U.S. Special Forces use a gun almost exactly like this. So to conclude today's episode about the Mark 18, the Mark 18 just makes sense. Remember that prior to the origination of the Mark 18, the military was primarily using pistol caliber carbines, i.e. the MP5, for close quarter combat. The MP5, as fantastic and reliable as it is, still fires 9mm, which is a pistol round, and it's a totally different system than the M16, M4, AR-15 that the entire rest of the military was using. So the Mark 18 just made sense. You could compress an M4 into a 10.3 inch upper package that would still be lethal and reasonably effective at longer ranges than the MP5. Moreover, the Mark 18 takes the same parts as the M16 and the M4 used by the entire rest of the military, and it uses the same magazines and the same ammunition. It has the same optics mounting system, unlike the MP5, so you can use the same optics from your M4 or your M16 on your Mark 18. In discussing the Mark 18 program, SOCOM said that it would increase operator survivability and lethality by enhanced weapon performance, target acquisition, signature suppression, and fire control. I think that's just military jargon for this thing kicks ass. As you saw from today's video, the Mark 18 is a light recoiling and accurate rifle in a very compact package, and I think it's going to stick around for quite a bit. Now to talk specifically about the Daniel Defense Mark 18, I approached Daniel Defense about doing this video because I saw the Daniel Defense Mark 18 as a commercial off-the-shelf rifle that met or exceeded all of SOCOM's requirements. Not only is Daniel Defense a provider of the rail system used on the contract Mark 18s, but the Daniel Defense Mark 18 itself meets or exceeds contract Mark 18 specifications in a number of ways, not the least of which includes the Cold Hammer Forge barrel and the Milspec Plus. Cerakote coating on the receiver. In other words, if you want a high-performing Mark 18 that's ready to go out of the box, 
you can just get the Daniel Defense Mark 18 and you're good to go. Daniel Defense is known for making some of the highest quality AR-15s out there, so it's unsurprising that this Mark 18 performed spectacularly. And it's hard to think of a better combination than a Daniel Defense Mark 18 with an EOTech XPS hologram optic, as well as a Surefire Scout Lite and a Surefire SOCOM 2 silencer. As usual, I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Blue Alpha Gear. If you want to talk about better than mil spec, Blue Alpha Gear makes the best belts in the industry. And I want to say thank you to Ventura Munitions, who supplies all of TFB's ammo. Finally, I have to say thank you to you guys and a very, very happy 4th of July. I hope you enjoyed today's program and I hope you had a great Independence Day. Take care, everyone.